All right, so the first thing on this quiz are gonna be your limits at infinity. So you do wanna recall your shortcuts. If your denominator is larger, as far as degree, than your numerator, it will be approaching zero. If they are the same, you are going to use your coefficients. And if the numerator is larger, that is when you are going to approach positive or negative infinity. And so if you look at this first one, you can see the numerator is larger. And so we know we're going to be approaching an infinity. Why negative infinity? Well, we're just going to see what happens. If I plug in, I'm approaching a negative. So if I plug in a negative and take it to the fourth, that's going to be positive. If I plug in a negative and square it, that's going to be positive. But this is my main problem here that happens with these. I do have a negative in front, so this guy is going to be negative infinity. For these last two on the bottom here, number six, we have the same degree, so I'm just going to use my coefficients. My coefficients here, one over one, which is how I get the one. And then for this one, I'm approaching negative infinity, but my denominator on the bottom is larger. And so either direction, from negative or positive, this is actually going to be approaching zero. The second type of problem you're going to have are these graphs. And so I've listed out to the side kind of your key things, your intercepts. X-intercept is where your numerator is zero and it doesn't cancel. Y-intercept, just plug in a zero for X. Holes, denominator is zero and it cancels. Vertical asymptotes, denominator is zero and it does not cancel. And I'm actually going to ask for all of these things here. Horizontal asymptotes are your shortcut. Your first derivative gives you your critical numbers. And this will also help you with um, increasing and decreasing. Uh, but you can actually list those open intervals once you figure out the rest of the function. That's fine. Um, second derivative will help you with concavity and your maximum test. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in factored form. Um, and then I'm going to see what I can look at. Um, my x-intercept. <clears throat> my x-intercept is where my numerator is um, 0. Well, I'm not going to have an x-intercept here because there is no place that I can make that 0 y-intercept, if I plug in a 0 for x, I will get negative 1 16th. So I do have a y-intercept. Holes, denominator is 0 and it cancels. I don't have any of these because nothing cancels. I do have vertical asymptotes. Those occur at x equals 4 and x equals negative 4. A horizontal asymptote, well, my denominator is larger than my numerator, so that is going to be at y equals 0. And now I'm going to look at finding my first derivative. So I would rewrite this as x squared minus 16 to the negative 1. That means I'm going to have negative 1 x squared minus 16 to the negative 2 times 2x. So my first derivative is going to be negative 2x over x squared minus 16 squared. Um, so <clears throat> this helps me because I do have some critical numbers here. I have critical numbers that happen at x equals 0 and at 4 and negative 4, which we already know are our asymptotes. So those are not going to be turning points, but we know that they're there. My second derivative, this is going to require the quotient rule. So for this one, I'm going to say negative 2 times that denominator minus a negative 2x. So that's going to end up being plus 2x times 2 times this guy right here, and then um, times the derivative of the inside, which is just 2x, all over my x squared minus 16 to the fourth. And you can see that we are going to have some canceling that happens here. One of each of these cancel, so then I can simplify it negative 2x squared plus 32. Uh, this becomes 8x squared all over that denominator 
And then of course I get six x squared plus 32 all over x squared minus 16 cubed. So this numerator is never gonna equal zero and the denominator we already know equals zero at my critical numbers or at my asymptotes. So I'm gonna go ahead and graph what I know. Graph these asymptotes, the verticals at four and negative four. So those are my vertical and horizontal asymptotes. I can go ahead and uh, put in my y-intercept, which is right here. And then I just need to figure out what's happening as far as concavity here. Um, concavity will actually tell me which side of this graph that I'm on. Because if I'm concave up, I have to be on this side to meet this vertical and this horizontal. And if I'm concave down, I would have to be on this side. So I can just pick a point. I can pick something like negative five. Negative five will always be positive here. Um, so if I'm testing points on this side of the graph, negative five is what I'm testing. Test it in your second derivative. Negative five will yield a positive on the top and a positive on the bottom. So this is gonna be concave up on this side right here. Um, if I were to pick a point in the next section, I would pick uh, my y-intercept, so I'm going to pick 0 because that happens in this particular section here. If I plug in a 0 on the top, I'm going to get positive, but if I plug in a 0 on the bottom, I will get negative. So this is going to be concave down. And then again, I can pick a positive 5 over here. That's going to yield positive over positive, so I'm going to be concave up here as well. So how does this help me? Well, um, open intervals where it's concave up and down. Well, from negative infinity to negative four, I am concave. I am concave up, negative four to four, concave down, and four to infinity, concave up. This also tells me where my critical number or my max is. My max happens at x equals zero. And you can do the same for increasing and decreasing.